Uh, Gina, thanks for um, Zooming with me today to talk about your show, The Colony. Mm, thank um, you. Gina wrote The Colony and it opens at Good Luck Macbeth Theater on August 27th at 7.30. Woo -hoo. And I will be there. <laughs> I know. That's the coolest part. We're really yeah. nervous, but we're really excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, I started writing The Colony in, uh, it was in 2017. And a big part of, of starting to think about the idea was sort of um, after the 2016 election, just kind of the, the kind of whiplash that that election sort of gave, seemed to give our country um, and me personally uh, was was really kind of a reckoning, I think, for in so many ways. No matter kind of <clears throat> no matter who you supported, I think it was sort of a, a real moment, a real surprise, like a big moment in our country. Um, uh, and, and especially in terms of um, after the election, there were all these sorts of new, you know, restrictions that were being put in place or potential um, sort of civil rights issues that were suddenly feeling threatened. Um, and so I was just sort of thinking about this moment in our in our history and sort of what to do with it as an artist and a writer. Um, and then I sort of accidentally stumbled across the 1927 Buck versus Bell um, Supreme Court sort of uh, the, the case. And I remember just reading the decision um, and just kind of getting chills because it was talking so much to uh, a lot of things that felt like they were happening in our country in 2016. There was just this real clear sense of, of xenophobia and of a divided country um, and you know, immigration restrictions. And so I was sort of doing more and more research about the time and, and what led to that Supreme Court case, which essentially legalized uh, eugenics in the US. So, the sort of forced sterilization of people who were deemed, you know, unfit to procreate. Um, and it was just really eerie how there seemed to be a lot of things happening that led to that, that felt sort of echoed um, in 2016. And so originally I started writing the play uh, about the woman who was sort of put at the center of the Supreme Court case. And it was meant to be a sort of look back at the past to kind of make us think differently about the present. But then the more I was researching, the more I discovered how that wasn't just a moment of the past that ended and I just kept finding more and more sort of uh, events that continued, you know, some of them to the present day that still uh, had to do with this sort of subject. So um, it yeah. kind of evolved in the writing of it to include even more than just looking at the past, but also kind of taking a hard look at ourselves today. And it's interesting. So as a director, I had to do my research on this, the true story. Mm -hmm. And I see how cleverly you've woven things in and put in new characters and built legacy. And it's just really beautiful. So I hope everyone comes um, to Justice Plays. Um, I, yeah, I am, one of my current new plays is um, about sex education. Um, and so a lot of it has to do with also reproductive rights, which a lot of the colony is, is about. Um, but in a more contemporary uh, and comedic way, uh, after the colony, I was very, it was very depressing as well. It's not the whole play. There is some funny stuff, but writing the play was a lot. So I wanted to kind of shift gears to something more lighthearted, but also important. So I'm writing, yeah, I'm working on a play right now that is about um, sex ed and uh, how do we teach it? How do we talk about it? And, yeah. you know, how does that affect our understandings of reproductive rights in the country about theater? And so, you know, another play of mine that I was just thinking about that is also very new um, to me, like fits in this in this same kind of world where it's about, it's it's a loose adaptation of The Cherry Orchard, but set during the 2008 housing and financial crisis. And so that one is, you know, it's really about like financial literacy and capitalism and how it affects people of all classes and everything. And so, um, so that's another one that I'm working on currently. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I think it is definitely present in, in most of my work, there's at least some some big kind of social question uh, that I'm trying to explore through theater. Yeah. For now, oh, I have one more. Yeah. Um, is there anything you're excited about besides seeing your play on the stage mm -hmm. um, in Reno? Like you're coming from Vermont, right? Yes. A yeah. long flight. Mm -hmm. um, I am, I'm, okay, so I've never been to Reno. I've never been to Nevada, which I also even just learned, not just, but the first time I spoke to you that it's even pronounced Nevada, not Nevada. So yeah. I'm a real newbie. 
Um, I am, I'm honestly at this moment, a total blank slate. I don't, I haven't looked up much, but I'm really excited just to kind of get a, a 10 day snapshot of what I can see in the city in that time. And, um, yeah, I'm excited just to like, I don't, I don't even know what the temperatures, I have looked at nothing and I'm really excited. Today. Okay, great. But it's a dry heat, right? Dry heat. Bro. Okay. It's a dry heat. Then it's fine. It's no big deal. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about the, it looks like there's a lot of really beautiful nearby nature and, yeah. um, just really cool. Yeah. Cool culture in the city. I'm just excited about everything. I wish I had a more specific, what is, what is one thing I'm going to interview, you now? what is like one thing that someone coming to Reno besides coming to see a show at Good Luck Macbeth, um, should not miss. And I'll the do that. Lake, Lake Tahoe. Oh, the Lake, Lake Tahoe. Nice. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. So, I will be there. <laughs> okay, let's take it a step further. We're going to end in a minute, but if you're watching this on a um, social media platform, throw some in the comments. What should yeah. Gina do while she is here in our lovely city? Yeah. Well, thank you, Gina. I can't wait to meet you um, on the 27th. Yeah. I'm so excited and I can't yeah. wait to see, yeah, what, what you have done with the play. It's my, it will be my first time just getting to fly somewhere or go somewhere and just show up in the audience and see a play of mine that I was not involved in the rehearsal process at all. So I am really scary, excited. It? It's very scary, but I'm mostly very excited. Yeah. Yeah. 